Well, welcome to a new sermon series that I have been personally very excited already for weeks. And I, I was almost like starting it already a couple of weeks ago, but we wanted to just focus on, on Easter too. And that was important. So, but now as everything is right in God's timing, everything comes together. And I don't know if maybe you missed the service or if you're watching online um, later, but uh, this is for the core groups, for you guys, if you're meeting in homes, I just want to give you again, and this, uh, provide a little video for you guys so that you can talk and take this sermon series into the homes and kind of just talking, even go a little bit deeper into it. Um, this Project 72 that the Lord put on my heart with, with that sentence, it kind of it just comes from those disciples that he's sending out. And uh, maybe just talk today among yourselves of the sense of urgency that you feel in your lives. If that's maybe in your family life or maybe that's in work life or maybe just stuff that you see on the news. Um, I think we all see stuff on the news all around us or we scroll through Twitter or Facebook Facebook and we get some information and but there is this sense of urgency right now maybe you're listening to a different speaker and they're saying the same message or maybe you've had a dream or a vision uh, and it points in the same direction it's this sense of urgency so maybe just talk a little bit of where you feel a, a, a sense of urgency but then after that I, after you've talked about this then turn your attention toward where are we at if we have this sense of urgency that the clock is ticking, I use this example of uh, the workers in the vineyard uh, at the 11th hour. That's just like one hour before work ends, actually. And at the 11th hour, the Lord is still hiring people for the harvest field to send them out into the harvest field. And as I was reading the story over again, I felt very strong. This is in Luke chapter 20, um, this story. Um, and just this, the, the, the wording that he uses there, um, standing around idly, idle. You know, he, he's asking them, and I, I kind of felt like this, if the Lord comes back, would he say over our lives, why have you been standing around idly all your years? all your months or this whole last year and you you were not available you made yourself not available to me and i had so much thing that i wanted to bring across your path and you were not willing i i just wonder like would we hear those words why are we standing around idly now going into the harvest field he's sending them out you know the crazy part about this whole story is that later on as the workers are talking about their wages about their payouts, then the grumbling starts. And then this comparison starts, that one compares themselves with the other. But Reiner Bonk has saved more people than we ever did, and, or, or so-and-so sings better in, on the worship team. And, you know, we start comparing, and that's exactly what the disciples like. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like. The church is like our Christian life. What we live for the Lord is exactly like this. So who are we? Are we the people that stand around idly? Are we the people that stand around maybe just fighting with one another and grumbling because we have been treated poorly or differently or we've been overlooked with promotions or something? Where are we at in the process of this harvest field? Or we just put everything off that so easily entangles us, even with thoughts. This morning there was this very strong uh, sense too about <clears throat> the enemy attacking and just betraying our minds and just playing tricks with our minds and uh, leading our hearts off. And the enemy knows that the time is short and he's trying in the last days to distract us more than ever before. He's given us more distraction. He, just here at the end of the service, uh, a young lady asked if I could pray for her because all of a the sudden there's just so much confusion in her life she doesn't know. And I ask for clarity and I really feel like that the enemy is just trying to throw everything at us that he can in order to distract us from the real path 
that the Lord has for us. And that's maybe still steps of obedience is that he's waiting for us to take in order to yield more and more and more to him. But in the, in the volume of all the, the distraction around us, we just can't hear it. We're, we're just lazy. We are falling lax and lazy. And we're just not doing anything. And it is, I think in this time, this Project 72, um, there is this, this, the sense of urgency that the Lord wants to instill in all of us that we got to be all in. It's no longer time to slumber, to step back. It's no longer to do, um, I don't know, just to go about our own way. Somebody else asked me about investment and, and stuff. And I said, I know nothing about investments. I know about the kingdom investment and that, that investment is about bearing fruit and saving lives. So I can put my treasures wherever I think fit, but I know that the moths are gonna eat it and maybe inflation eats it up. And I just don't care about what this world and the stuff of the world and to try to save it or save it or prolong the stuff of the world, the only thing that counts, the only thing that the Lord is going to measure our faithfulness on is if we have served him in the harvest field. So all, everything that he's given us, he has to serve the harvest field somehow. And that's what I meant with this first point. The Lord will not do in us what he cannot do through us. You know, we want the Lord to save the world, but sometimes we're just so caught up with all this stuff. And if we allow the Lord to work on our hearts, to soften our hearts, to get our minds ready for action, if we allow him to do this, all of a sudden he can flow through us. And very often we wonder why it is it, we are effectless. We feel like we're uh, preaching a heart out to our work colleague or to a family member and it's not being received or we pray for a certain church member uh, and, and it's just not changing anything. We're a family member and uh, the prodigal and it's not, it's not happening and we want to see those effects. Sometimes the Lord just wants to start with us and get all this stuff out. Get all this stuff yielded over to Him. All our worries, all our concerns, all our plans for the future and just give it all to Him and say, Lord, it's all yours. I am just your driver. Lord, do whatever you want to do. I take you in wherever you point in the right direction and I hit the gas pedal and I hold, you hold the steering because He's actually steering us, right? So that's, that's my prayer. And then the harvest is plentiful. That was the second thought, but the workers of you, we got to pray to the Lord of the harvest for us workers because there's so many people standing around aisle. There's so many people that, that look at the times and they're locked the doors and they're afraid of stepping out and stepping out in boldness. The workers are few. You know, when, when, when the Lord says, that, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like, our church is like this. The workers are few. Are f the people that are actually yielded 100% to the Lord, if, that's, if that ratio is correct, even within the church, even within all the churches, that the soul winning churches are few. There's a lot of people that just come to church in order to feel better and they go back, but it's, it's not being part of the harvest field. So I want to be a church and I, I feel like this urgency that the Lord wants to instill in us that in this season, in this next summer, just coming into a fall, there is stuff that God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in. In July, in May, June, July, August, September, there is stuff that He has prepared for us. He wants us to walk in those works and we have to be the ones that are ready. So I want to change our focus and our attention to where that harvest field, to really have like a harvest mentality and to go out and yield ourselves to the Lord. And I hope and pray that you're on board. Talk among yourselves a little bit about that and just pray in the end and just pray to the Lord of the harvest and just pray and say, here we are, send us. Let's do that together as church. God bless you.